Hello and welcome back to another character creation video. My name's Lumen and today we're having a look at Age of Wonders 4. Rule a fantasy realm of your own design. Explore new magical realms in Age of Wonders signature blend of 4x strategy and turn-based tactical combat. Control a faction that grows and changes as you expand your empire with each turn. So yeah, this game, I've been playing a little bit of it myself. It is a fantastical mix of Heroes of Might and Magic and Civilization and a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't expect. And it has customization that I didn't expect. You get to customize your scenario that you're playing in, so the map and the world and everything else, to the finest details. You get to customize the race that you're going to be playing with. And you get to customize your ruler or your hero. And it's just so much. And the game, the bit that I've played, super fun. I love it. I really do. There's just so much that you get to do on every single turn and the time it just vanishes when you play in this you blink and then it's like four hours later and you're like whoa <laughs> what just happened now because of all of that this video is probably going to be quite big maybe not in terms of the length but like there's a lot to jump between here and i'm definitely going to miss stuff I, I i can almost guarantee it but i'm going to hopefully give you a good look at what's available a taste of the kind of customization that you can actually work with in this game that's my goal here now before i forget i will tell you that you can do a deep dive you can discover all there is to discover about the game for yourself by following the links below and you can as always use the timestamps very important especially on a video like this so we're going to jump in now i'm going to make a new game or scenario or just start fresh choose your destination the first thing you get to do is you make the realm. Now this has its own slew of customization options. And this is the kind of stuff that I definitely can't cover in full. It's not so cosmetic, but it affects every aspect of the game. First you get to pick the official ones, right? So these are all the official scenarios that they made for you. And they are varied, they are different, they are fun, they are exciting. It's crazy. Then. There are custom ones that you can sort of download or import or create of your own and then save or you can create a fresh one that's where we're going to go now and when you do create a fresh one you get to change all of it all of it so first things first you customize the realm itself <laughs> this is like oh dude this is what this game is in a nutshell it's like one menu in another menu in another menu the depth is just phenomenal staggering geography traits so, uh, coast, continents, barren oceans, as we just saw there, divide, islands, land, lava divide, lava lakes, scarred divide, all this stuff. You get to do whatever the heck you want, and it changes the way the map will feel, and look, and everything else. Climate traits, desert, endless fields, forming realm, frozen realm, highlands, overgrown realm scorched climate you get to pick one of these if you want we can make endless fields inhabitants astral invaders demonic realm dragon territories immortal spirits lingering creators low population magical origins megafauna that sounds so cool peaceful lands rampant flora rampant undeath and wildlands oh man you can like get you can get lost in this i can tell you right now then presence trait pretender kings this is more specific. Uh, you can read there what it does. Uh, three successes lay claim to the throne of the prosperous kingdom. They all pretend they're kings. You need to deal with them or not, obviously. Then you get to apply miscellaneous traits, right? And there's a bunch of these. Not even going to go through these. No, not even going to look at all of them. Uh, I'm going to scroll slowly and you can look and I'll tell you how it works. Basically, certain of these cannot be used because they get locked out by the choices that you made before but it's it's very few that they lock out and then if you pick sort of one over here and you take arctic blizzards then you'll most likely get locked out of a lot of the lava ones or or, or fiery or volcanic ones uh, and 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 sort of those different combinations need to be kept in mind when you're creating a game right it's well it's a lot and you can pick up to four of them here right fantastic then the actual standard realm settings you pick how far the players spawn from each other how many players there are up to nine which is just crazy uh, the difficulty the turn system and then the name then you get to pick your portal visuals which is the way it's going to look 
when you select it. It's amazing that they give you so many cool options here. I love it. And you will notice that some of these aren't even used for the officials. They just made a bunch of extra art for us to use, which is awesome. Yeah. So you can probably find one that you like here. Good chance you can probably import your own ones as well. I don't know how that works. And if that wasn't enough, you can go to advanced settings and then I guess the real fun begins. Then you get to actually import custom factions for each of the AIs. You can make them into like real little nerds. You can make them into like brutal opponents that will hammer you down. Uh, you get to do basically all there is to do with this. You can do anything like your journey you can create your own here. ruler. I didn't want to jump into this now because this is going to like boggle your brain. If I show it to you now, we're not there yet, guys. But you get to customize their rulers, their races, their everything. It's insane. Then the game flow. These are the options that you get for that and combat options it's a lot of stuff and it just keeps on giving so once you've done this once you've customized your realm and made the one that you like then your journey starts here you create your faction or you pick one of the preset factions that they give you now this is basically what your civilization is going to be like and you pick in the you could call it the age that your civilization starts in, sort of like the, the tech level that they have, I suppose you could call it, but it's not as simple as that. It's not like one is higher tech than the other. It's more just, again, the civilization itself. Uh, you can see sort of that, that a lot of them have different stuff. Some of them seem like they are lower tech and higher tech. Some are more magical, some are more mechanical, uh, more industrial, and so on and so forth. You'll see the differences as we jump through here. And each of them has all their own statistics that they that they uh, sort of sport in. They will have their own traits. They will have their own, well, starting conditions and equipment and stuff like that. Their own magic or lack thereof. And so on and so forth. So here we have the Arik Rex, the Faithful Tigrans. Oh, his name is Arik Rex. The Faithful Tigrans the, is the faction. Here we have Alfred Elderstone, the Destined Humans. Zaythal Silverleaf, the first elves. This is fantastic. It looks so cool. Oh, look at the orcs. That is super. So this is your your leader. And at the back, you'll see the race that she's managing. So here's uh, Asgera Spine Splitter, the Bloodfang Orcs. Tugram Hammerhall, the Mountain Dwarves. Once again, look at the back there. They're changing. And you must pay attention to the armor that they're using, the pits and or mounts that they have the lot of it it all changes it all changes and it's awesome and it's kind of cool how there's like a combination here as well where you'll see when we go down a little further you have some leaders that have sort of enslaved a population and then you're playing it in a different way entirely you're ruling through fear it's it's awesome uh, here we have Inamaru, uh enkanan arcane tigrans Ham Binger, the Wholesome Halflings. Gloom Hooknail, the Necrotic Goblins. Cruel Blightlord, Fiendish Rodents. So sick, dude. Defal Dia, the Crusading Croakers. Sindrin Taliath, Ashborn Hedonists. They look so cool as well. Fangir, the Moonrock Dwarves. Wurlak of Insaldur, the Shadowborn Elves. Lint the Underdelver, that's the Deep Dwellers, they're moles, that's so cute. Artica, Gnarled Frostlings. Mishara the Radiant, Human Paladins. She looks she looks really cool, doesn't she? Zetavaka World Shaper, the Underground Disciples. And I want to point out to you that everything you see here, you can do. You can create a character like this and then some. This you can see is the example I was giving you where you have like a bunch of mole men that are like worshipping this lady. Carissa the Red, she's enthralled a bunch of orcs, which is just amazing. Raina the Golden, cursed toadlings. And then finally Necron the Risen, cruel deathbringers. So, if these are not to your liking, if they're not enough, then you can actually create your own. What is your people's form? And this is where the customization begins. The real customization. I can't get enough of this. So, these are the races. You got the human, the elfkin, the orcoid, the dwarfkin, the halflings, the goblinoid, feline, ratkin, toadkin, and molekin. Each of them 
has their own traits that they have pre-selected here you'll see as we jump through and then i'm going to tell you that you can actually change those so you know they they you can check that these guys come mole can come with bulwark selected and they come with the mind body and mind traits and the body the mind trait is underground adaptation but if you go to humans over here you can sort of pick whatever you want with it you can take underground adaptation on these guys as well there's nothing stopping you you are making a custom civilization and race here you can do what you want that said body traits here you go bulwark fast recuperation hearty keen sighted quick reflexes again i'm not going to give you all the details this is again something that you'd want to jump in for for yourself resilient uh, resistant resolute strong tough nightmare mounts spider mounts and unicorn mounts then we have the last one is a wolf mount kind of sick kind of sick yeah sure wolf mounts uh, and 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 this is again sort of something that will display itself when you've actually picked it so if i pick spider mounts here or unicorn mounts here then when we get to that portal image with the race standard that you you know you'll see what you've picked there um it's it's kind of cool and again there's a lot of different stuff that you could want here mind trait adaptable arcane focus cold-blooded defensive tactics elusive fast initiative ferocious and these are all very impactful when you actually play the game overwhelm tactics sneaky tenacious arctic adaptation desert underground and water adaptation very cool very very cool so once you pick the race you want you can jump in and there's customization for all of them right we'll show you how it starts so we select these guys what is right. that origin culture now you get to pick they call it the culture here it's sort of like i will call it the setting so you've got like a feudal setting and what it does is it gives you a bunch of traits and a bunch of different styles that come into play uh, you can see here it's basically going to give you extra food income unifits benefit from close formations with stand together and then you have feudal lords you can choose feudal if you'd like then you have high and each of them has these affinities as well right so they have basically here uh nature affinity and order affinity you'll see here's more order uh, there's chaos that's nature as well uh, materium affinity shadow affinity and mystic or astral affinity it's a lot of stuff that goes into each of these choices and with that said I'm going to sort of brush over it. I'm just going to show you what's available. Once again, I'm showing off the system. I'm not covering every tiny little thing because I really don't think I'm qualified. I'm playing the tutorial still, okay? I'm having a blast, but I'm still playing the tutorial. Hi. Now look when I change here, how the characters and the mounts and the armor and everything change. It's a highly developed society whose members strive for harmony. When threatened, however, they wield their guiding light as a weapon. And we have barbarians, which also looks sick. Look at the armor and stuff here. It's kind of amazing. And people who thrive on war and aggression, they value strength and prefer to charge head-on into bloody battles. You pick this, obviously, with a certain playstyle in mind. Uh, you know, if you pick the barbarians, there's a good chance you're not going to be doing much diplomacy. Let's just say that. You're going to choose to fight at every opportunity, and that's just going to be the way of your, of your game. Industrious, you can see they have slightly higher tech armor. They've got crossbows here. Uh, like well-made weapons they sort of kitted out a little bit more uh, they master builders who value grand cities and strong armor preferring a defensive attitude over an aggressive one then you have dark a dictatorial civilization where the strong and ruthless dominate the weak they use forbidden magics to maintain and control and weaken their enemies mystic fantastic as well look here they got like spirits aiding them here magical eyes and all these robes and stuff and weird masks it's super culture of scholars driven to study every corner of the astral sea they prefer to find answers through research and arcane prowess so the way this all basically comes together is it gives you an appearance for your for your uh, sort of starter city your race your culture your entire game basically and it also gives you different it's it's not so much different 
units to pick from but different styles you will notice that each of them as you go through there's like there's a spearman on that side you know it's just a different version of it every way uh, it's the same stuff but presented differently however it does change your gameplay quite significantly so for now let's just take barbarian because i think they look cool what then, defines their society you can choose two society traits these are goodly and evil different sort of uh let's just say um beliefs that your that your uh, people will have and if you go against what you pick here then they might be unhappy the morale might drop so you got to pick this quite nicely in line with what you would have picked before so like for barbarians you're probably not going to go for chosen uniters because they don't want to build a realm based on cooperation no you're going to rather go for ruthless raiders they murder without remorse they're more interested in loot and plunder so you got to make these choices uh, carefully but what we have here is chosen uniters devotees of good imperialists prolific swarmers ritual cannibals ruthless raiders ancient wise ones gifted casters mana channelers uh, when you pick one then you get limited with the second choice adept settlers experienced seafarers fabled hunters great builders runesmiths wonder architects powerful evokers scions of evil and shadow walkers so again let's take ruthless raiders and prolific swarmers for now choose your first tome of magic now you get to actually pick the tome that you start with and the spells that you'll get to research right at the start and there are some pretty cool options here you will probably be able to find something that will match again the play style and the race and the culture that you go in for it makes sense to pick something that lines up with it because you get bonuses from your research and your traits and your talents and stuff that will help so yeah you can see over here pyromancy initial bonus chaos affinity you'll probably want something like this uh, for for the barbarians but there's more the this one also the tome of the horde lots of different spells that you can get here these are the ones that you can use almost every single battle uh, and then they'll also probably dictate this kind of spells that you can research and use on the overworld map pretty cool pretty cool like the the summons for instance are done in the overworld whereas the damage in spells and stuff like that are done in battle tome of enchantment tome of roots tome of beasts zeal faith cryomancy souls warding evocation and we're back on pyromancy lots of cool options here i'm going to select tome of the horde for now what is your then, ruler's origin you get to pick whether you are a champion that's a ruler that rises from the ranks of their people or a powerful wizard seeking dominion over a new realm gives you different bonuses here gives you a different way to play basically and i'm gonna say i'm almost certain that most of the options are the same on both of these you'll Reveal see that when you select yourself. it there are some more helmets and some more head customization options on this so if you pick like the wizard one i'm gonna go straight down here and show you you have all sorts of like really sick looking uh head pieces and like robes and outfits and capes and stuff that look different whereas if what you go for the champion one origin? you are Reveal yourself. a champion of the people and you will notice once again that you are picking different options if you go down here to helmet that that more suit this style now what i mentioned before is very important here I, I i've mentioned this a few times now it's going to be very difficult for me to cover everything so look if i scroll through these here as a quick example before i start the customization the helmets and stuff here lots of horns lots of sort of more primal and tribal looking stuff and if i go back what is your ruler's origin and yeah i gotta go kind of what far is back that origin culture? let's go to mystic right and what then i go through with the same option we go back to champion Reveal i want to show yourself. you that over here you have different options completely different so i'm gonna just say that it's gonna be almost impossible for me to cover everything because every one of those will have something different however the style of customization that you do will be the same so what i will say here is that for the most part what you can do in this customization section here will be the same on all the races there'll just be a few extras here and there that suit the style keep that in mind and we're just going to look at this one here 
and then you must just sort of think what you could expect. You pick the barbarians, you get horns. Yeah, you get furs, you get stuff like that. Pick the mystics, you get magical stuff that you put all over yourself. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, you pick the feudal guys, you get some pot helms and breastplates and stuff. There you go. <laughs> Alright. So, first up, uh, you get to pick what kind of weaponry you start with. Mace and shield, uh, bladed mace, lightning staff, or lightning orb. This changes as well, 100%. It is very different for each of the... Uh, different options you pick along the way right so it's something that you've got to once again keep in mind uh, body type that's male and female all right and you will see a few options the beard for instance disappears when you pick the female character uh, you will also see that it randomizes quite nicely as you go through here uh, a little bit at least let's do the male first physique this is the size of your character and you do get to customize that arm length I'm going to change the pose quickly so you can see where is the pose here we go there you go so you can see how much it actually matters because it does matter a lot and as i'm going through here i want you guys to keep in mind that this that i'm changing here now it also applies to the race it to some extent we'll check this out afterwards but just keep that in mind as i go through leg length can make your character like super tall arm and leg length yeah there we go actually looks kind of cool then you get to do skin color. With the skin color, the different races have different options. Okay? That's something very, very important. <laughs> very, very important. Skin decoration, we're going to zoom in for that quickly. There are tons of different options here that you can pick from. Some of them kind of terrifying, some of them kind of cool. Uh, all very, very, very fun. I mean, I don't know if I'd call that fun, but, like, it's awesome being able to customize your character so much in a game where you don't even expect there to be any customization. <sighs> Pose. Very cool as well. This is the pose your character will take in the game when you see it constantly. And then we've got some head options here. Let's zoom in for that. This is going to be your face. If you pick the mystics, if you pick the different styles of races different kinds of of races for your leader your champion here you will notice that there will be a lot of different options that will match that eye color which i find like it's ridiculous that there's an eye color option in this game i know that there are some unique and special eyes here that yeah i mean would make sense for your race like magical looking eyes but like still still the eye color the reason you'd want to spend so much time customizing is because if you play multiplayer or something like that, or if you, if you, you know, display in your character, you do get to see it up close and personal sometimes, so it's kind of important. Hairstyles. And now I'm showing you male human, of all things, right? But there is just so much more. There is so, so, so much more. I don't know how they actually fit all of this in here, but it's incredibly well done, and it's such a robust system. That once again i will struggle to cover it all let's take this luscious one uh, beard style not that many beards uh, but again they're different across the races and stuff like that let's take that one that looks kind of nice then you get to pick the hair color some decent options uh, they are reasonably bright they are reasonably nice there are there are some choices that you wouldn't have expected like the colorful ones but then you got the basics with the darker uh, and more natural looking colors bottom this is sort of like, uh, I, would, I wanted to say this is like a highlight, uh, but it's sort of difficult to see. You see, it's like the, it's the bottom layer, basically, of the hair. But there you go. Outfit. This is your ruler's outfit. This is fitting, once again, to the race and the setting that you picked and set up. So this kind of stuff changes, once again, with all the other options that you could have. Helmets. So this whole video has just ended up being me saying, oh, 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 there's so much more that I can show you that I'm not showing you. <laughs> but that's just the size of this. That's the scale of what's available here. It's kind of crazy. Cape. Let's go back to the start. Very cool options here. There you go. Armor color. It's 
not as impactful i want to say it sort of it, it sort of covers your horse armor your shield uh, and a few other things not super duper you know uh, and then you can randomize and if i randomize here you will see it randomizes basically everything and you're going to notice almost immediately that there is a big difference between the different characters that you can get here i mean you're looking at this and and these look like entirely different races you see just looks like an entirely different race altogether with the different outfits you can pick from with the different styles the sizes of the body and so on and so forth it's crazy to think so here as an example on female uh, you can you can change your physique quite a lot as well you can be like super skinny lanky uh, make the arms long and the legs long if you want to uh, it's it's kind of a crazy look and then once again the poses and stuff come in to change it a lot uh, the different outfits quite nice on female different styles here uh, different markings on the body you will see like this one's covered in blood which is kind of unnerving i want to say the helmets and stuff are mostly the same uh, but there's just so much you can do and now i don't want to leave it at that because the customization in this game it's so much more diverse than that before we jump into the race customization i'm going to keep this champion customization section going a little bit just so i can show you a few other what is your options origin? so for wizard king Reveal if i jump in yourself. here and i randomize a few times you will notice almost immediately that there are a bunch of different options and when you go for wizard king then you will see that it doesn't lock you into what is your ruler's origin your chosen race and and sort of setting right because this one rises from the ranks of their people so i chose here to go for Reveal humans yourself right so my character based on that is a human but if you go what wizard king then you are a ruler that arrived Reveal and took yourself. control of the people right so now you get to change your physical form as well so we're going to go to male, and I'm going to show you how this works. This is basically picking from all the races that are available right now. I'm going to just take everything on, on basic default here, so that we can just show you, for the most part, how it looks. There you go. Physical form. I think there's one more that I need to change. It will be... That's sort of like a skull. I just don't want it on the skull. There you go. Something like this. And then... Skin decoration off. There you go. Okay. So, physical form. We've got the orcs. Yeah, yeah, it's like, don't pay attention to the skin color right now, okay? It's sort of, there you go. Okay, you got the orcs, the elves, the halflings, the mole people, the rat people, the goblins, they look creepy, humans, frog people, that's so cute, dwarves, and cats. And each of these has so many different options. I cannot even begin to tell you how cool it is, how much customization there is. Like, the amount that they have here, it rivals any MMO out there. It's just, that's what I'll say. It's like, the options are, are impactful, they're varied. Uh, you know, as an example, let's pick the cat people. Then let's look at a few of the different options here, right? Let's take this to the end so we can just see them normally. Skin decorations. Lots of different options you can pick on here. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, I'll show you the skin colors. They got different fur colors. Great selection of them. Keep in mind, the mole people will have a similar selection of skin colors or fur colors in this case. Pick sort of anything you like here. Uh, I've already showed you what the arm length and stuff looks like if you change it. It's very cool. Uh, then the heads. Different styles. The eye color much more impactful on this one as you can see the eyes are much bigger cool options hairstyle a few less than as an example the human ones uh, but still a decent amount and then you've got outfits here these are outfits for the wizard king that you're creating i mean this one look at this you can see the actual cosmos inside underneath those straps and bandages isn't that sick so you can basically customize your wizard king into anything you want and i love it look at that wow amazing different variations of it again the male and female ones are different now I feel, and this is what my initial sort of idea was right from the start, like the best way to show off this entire system 
is and the champion and and sort of ruler customization is just to randomize a bunch uh, i want to however just bring special attention to this the helmets because these are the coolest designs there are some really fun ones here i love this there are even ones that take your whole head apart watch like this oh it is so cool they just did such a phenomenal job with the customization options here so good so good capes these are the same as what we saw in the human customization and then we're gonna randomize now this is the best way to show you what you can do with with basically everything here right because this will randomize between the different races the armor types and everything else now keep in mind how many races there were and how many options we're busy working through here and just marvel at the splendor like, look at this. Lich King, if he was a goblin. <laughs> it's amazing. It is so sick. And all of these will be available if you choose, again, as an example, one of the races. So if you choose to play as the elves, uh, then you can choose this as a champion for the elves. Your journey begins. I didn't actually want to go Reveal back yourself. there. I was still busy randomizing. So you can do that or you can do the, the sort of wizard approach. And either of them can be played in any way, by the way. They just give you different bonuses when you start. It's amazing. So I hope this gives you a good enough idea of how much goes into customizing your race and your character and or champion in this game. Because like at the end of the day, this is just me like nerding out over cool options for like a long period of time. I can't really display them all that easily like every minute detail will not be here but you can easily get a look at like all the cool stuff that's possible and then that could be inspiration enough for you to jump in because for me i look at all of this and I'm, i i can think of so many different things i'd love to do it's super Wow. I think the helmets are probably the stars of the show. And then the outfits, obviously. But like, man, you can do some really cool stuff with this. So there you go. It's sick. And as I've said like a hundred times already, I can't get enough of the amount of customization that they added here. I can't get enough. And... You can do anything. You can make yourself like a down-to-earth leader wearing just some simple robes and using a wooden staff. Or you can make yourself this like super fancy looking noble highborn with like, uh, you know, a massive flowing silk robe and a, a gaudy crown. Or you can make yourself an otherworldly being that's coming apart at the seams. <laughs> There's so much. There's so much. And it's all here. You can make yourself a, a gladiatorial champion that's, that's you know, taking control and ruling the people through a sheer force of will. It's awesome. So, with that done, that's the ruler customization. We're going to jump into the race customization. And at the end, I'll show you this little icon customization that you can do here as well. With the race, you are picking your race in the previous menu and then you're going to choose basically you can choose the physique that makes them larger or smaller uh, you can choose the arm length and the leg length make them taller or shorter um, then you can do the skin color for the for your army that's just sort of you know picking the heritage or the background or whatever but there are some red and like frosty options here and stuff so it's kind of interesting uh, then the armor color not a huge amount of choices here but there are some the hair color don't know why everyone has the same color here but there you go and then mount type uh, now we don't have a mount to choose from here but i'll go back and i'll organize one in just a moment uh, because i would like to show you just what uh, is your uh, another origin? another choose race your first tome of magic. so if we go all the way back over what here and again i knew this culture? was going to be the, the the case we'd have to go back and forth a bunch but if i go back here and i pick let's say something a little different let's say the orcoids okay then Let's take 
What this is one. their origin culture? <laughs> As you can see, when you pick the unicorn, there's a unicorn chilling over there. Uh, and, what and again, is your people's uh, form? Spider. What is spider. their origin culture? It's a teeny little spider to be riding. What is your people's form? Pick a nightmare. What That's is their cool. origin culture? And finally, a wolf. What is their Super origin duper. culture? Then let's just take something different here. Let's take barbarians. What we'll defines in. their society? What is your ruler's origin? We'll take champion. Reveal yourself. There you go. We're on the race options again. Physique can be changed. As you can see, bigger and smaller. As I mentioned before, the arm length, the leg length, the skin color. These are also once again locked in. So you get the red and the and the frosty ones and stuff. And then the mount type, you can see you can't change it here because you've locked it into wolf with a trait. So if I go back what again, now I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure exactly where to get the mounts culture? from. If we take basically the what wolf mount one off form? and then let's select, let's say the goblins for now. What is their origin there you go. culture? Okay, so now Choose if we go in here, of magic. We can look at the different mounts, Reveal but it's again, it's yourself. the same ones we saw before. Uh, here we go. There's the unicorn. There's a boar mount. A wolf. Uh, a slightly gnarlier looking wolf. Horses. Ponies. And that's it. Kind of cool. Kind of cool how much you can do there. Then, we get to customize our sigil. You get to change the background color between these colors here. You get to change the foreground color between these colors here and you get to pick a icon lots of different icons here you'll probably find something you like something that works for you and yeah you put it together and that'll be the icon that your army has it's kind of nice i like it i like it and then as you jump in your journey begins your final step lord diviner emperor lady diviner empress this stuff changes once again vastly based on the choices that you make so like as an example you can see our race name here is arcane humans because that's the first one we picked earlier on uh, you can set your first name and your last name and then it gives you a little story here and then you can jump in and actually sort of start playing Reveal the game. yourself Whew, that's a lot right that is so 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 much what you can jump between them over here society? um what is your people's form? i feel like i've showed off uh, pretty much all there is to see what in terms of the customization culture? but obviously not all the specifics so you've got an idea now of what you can do and what you can do so much of it society? every choice you make here what is changes origin what's available Reveal here yourself so as an example here we have the mole men as the race you get to change their physiques get to make them a little different uh, you get to change their skin color make them any color you want uh, the mounts and everything else and that is going to bring what is us your ruler's origin? to the end of this video. <laughs> your journey Crazy. begins. I love it. Guys, Age of Wonders 4. The amount of customization options that they threw in here. Again, it's me sitting here nerding out over all of it for like an extended period of time. The amount that they threw in here is just fantastic. It is super, super Choose cool. Your first uh, I love how magic. this works where you can have your ruler separate Reveal from your army. Uh, we chose Wizard King now, so if we take our ruler here and we just randomize a little bit, you'll see there are so many different options here. I'd love to know if you guys have messed around with this. If you are playing this game, what do you think of it? Have you been enjoying it? I mentioned at the start very briefly, I've been playing. I've played about 20 or 30 turns. It's awesome. There is so much going on. There's so much to do and see. Every turn is exciting for different reasons. You know, with the diplomacy going on, with the combat tactics, when you actually fight in, it feels like such a cool mix between the old school Heroes of Might and Magic style and then like maybe the Total War games where you have to actually think about your battlefield and how you're going to engage with the enemy and all that stuff. It is such a fresh difference from stuff like we recently played Songs of Conquest, which was awesome in its own right, but this is so different from that. It's great. Then every turn you've got your city to manage you've got your armies to manage your actual ruler and hero levels up like an rpg character you get to equip different gear on it and different mounts the game just keeps on giving there is so much it is the deepest experience that i've had in gaming in a long time there is just so so much so i'd love to hear from you guys if you've been obsessed with this too if you've been playing this and if you've been enjoying this 
uh, because for me it's been awesome a breath of fresh air really because i haven't played something like this in a while uh, so i'm loving it and i'd love to hear what you guys think about it and then i'd love to hear probably more importantly what you think of the customization because again there's just so much here you know you just keep going and going and going and going and going and you can do anything and it's even more fun if you do this stuff and you get to play with friends or something like that or against friends uh, because you get to show it off then you get to be intimidating imposing and all that other stuff it's sick so let me know what you guys think what's your favorite race what are your favorite options you know what kind of scenarios do you set up any of that stuff it's cool if you guys contribute in that way because then anyone who jumps in watches this video they can go down to the comment section they can sort of you know just be part of the whole conversation the experience because yeah sharing what you enjoy what you're passionate about that's a okay that's a cool thing to do so you can check back here as always for more give this one a like and share it and do all that other good stuff subscribe if you haven't already most importantly happy creating those characters and races in age of wonders happy that <laughs>